This is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News. Methane gas trapped under the Arctic tundra has been called the ticking time bomb of climate change. Due to its high propensity to trap heat in the atmosphere, methane's global warming potential over a 20 year period is 86 times that of carbon dioxide, the greenhouse gas at the heart of most climate change discussion and analysis. So how concerned should we be about all the methane contained in the far north's permafrost? Because the Arctic is heating up at twice the rate of the rest of the globe, parts of the Arctic tundra are thawing. This may be allowing long buried pockets of methane to be released into the atmosphere, new research suggests. A study published in the journal Scientific Reports has concluded that, quote, strong geologic methane emissions from discontinuous terrestrial permafrost in the Mackenzie Delta, Canada, suggests that these methane seeps on the tundra may be more problematic than previously thought. With us to discuss the study is one of its authors, Torsten Sachs. Torsten is a researcher at the GFZ German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam, Germany. He studies the exchange of carbon dioxide and methane between various ecosystems and the atmosphere. Torsten joins us today from Potsdam, Germany. Thank you for joining us, Torsten. Thank you for having me. So in general terms, Torsten, what do you regard as the most significant findings of this new study? The most significant, the most significant finding is probably um, that we were able to pick up these geologic methane seeps uh, with our aircraft measurements, and then we could actually see, looking at such a large area, um, that even though they they occur on only a small fraction of the area, they could contribute up to 17 percent of the annual emissions. That's a rough estimate, but still, um, we saw that that they play quite a significant role and. Um, they haven't been looked at much before, uh, maybe on an individual basis, but not on such a large scale. Could you talk to us a bit more about your methodology? We are measuring the methane right at the location of the aircraft. And then we infer uh, what's happening on the surface from those measurements uh, at, at the aircraft. Um, so what we're using is a method that in technical terms is called micrometeorology or eddy covariance. And it relies on measuring very quickly, very accurately, the wind vector in all three directions and also the gas concentrations. And from their covariance, we can um, deduce the amount of methane or carbon dioxide that moves vertically from the surface into the atmosphere or the other way around. And is this uh, methodology that you've described, is it uh, allowing us to make more accurate, substantially more accurate assessments of the amount of methane seepage than prior studies have done? Uh, well, what's allowing us to be a bit more accurate is that we can actually cover a large area and not just an individual small study site on the ground. The uncertainty that most of the previous studies carry with them is that um, the Arctic is huge, it's difficult to access. Um, we have very few data, so we have to extrapolate from very small study sites to a very large area, and that causes errors. Um, and we can look at 10,000 square kilometers at once now um, and avoid certain location biases. So we can get a bit better overview over the entire large area. There are pros and cons uh, to both scales, of course. Um, but this is what we can contribute. We can look at the big picture, so to say. And looking at the big picture, can we now can we say with reasonable confidence now at what rate the Arctic permafrost is thawing and at what rate it's releasing methane into the atmosphere? And in particular, are we able to say whether or not the rate of thaw and the rate of seepage uh, is accelerating? Uh, well, not from our study alone. Um, so those are two things. First of all, the rate of thaw. Um, well, there are observations, of course, from boreholes that are scattered across uh, the entire Arctic. A lot of what we know or project into the future is based on, on complex mathematical models. And those, to be honest, are still all over the place uh, and with their projections. There is a recent study now that um, took a different approach. Um, and they were saying that if we limit the warming, the global warming, to two degrees, we're going to lose probably around six million square kilometers uh, of permafrost towards the end of the century, 
And if we limit it to one and a half degrees, we're go still going to lose 4.8 million square kilometers out of the 50 million total. Um, are, we, are we able to say but, what what the loss of that much permafrost area, uh, what quantity of methane would uh, be released into the atmosphere as a result of that loss? No, that, that's equally uncertain still. Um, we're currently in a process where we try to to bring the numbers from so-called bottom-up estimates. That means people go out into the field, do their measurements, and then scale it up uh, to larger regions or the entire Arctic. And the so-called top-down estimates based on, on satellite data or aircraft data to, to make those agree a bit more. Because right now, they are still um, not in very much agreement. So it's difficult to say even right now what the current emission is. Um, so and then look to look into the future. Um, that again relies on models, and if those models can't even get the the thaw right. Then of course everything else down the chain uh, is also still very uncertain. There are some estimates um, that that uh, say that all the permafrost carbon release, that's not just methane, also carbon dioxide could contribute 0.3 degrees of warming by the end of the century. But that, again, that's that's one model study out of many. Um, and there's still a lot of work to be done on that front, too. So as a layperson, what I'm hearing is that uh, trying to ascertain that, that there's a considerable amount of uncertainty in the scientific community surrounding uh, the rate at which a thawing permafrost is releasing and will release methane into the atmosphere. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, this is a very potent greenhouse gas, much more potent over a 20-year period or so than CO2. The scientific community has established a carbon budget. Is it in fact, is, is it possible, for example, that our carbon budget is in fact much smaller than we have believed it to be up until now because it doesn't adequately take into account uh, the potential for methane release? Uh, yes, that, that's actually true for the entire permafrost carbon feedback. Uh, that's not included in, in the big IPCC models. Um, so if we talk about limiting warming to one and a half degrees, um, that does not include the permafrost carbon. So if that adds another 0.3 degrees, then in reality we are talking about 1.2. Right. Now I understand that methane is released not only from uh, the, the thawing permafrost, but also in the microbiological process of the thawing tundra. Can you explain the distinction in which of these two is likely to be a greater source of methane leakage uh, into the atmosphere? Uh, the greater source is definitely the, the microbial methane production on the surface, um, because permafrost very often is essentially a wetland. And so like in any wetland, even in, in temperate latitudes, um, as long as there is no oxygen present, and microbes can chew on organic material uh, that will produce methane. Uh, and that's what hap what's happening in large expanses of the permafrost world. And uh, the thought is now there's a lot of organic carbon contained in the permafrost. And if that thaws, the microbes have more to chew on, and they can produce more methane. On top of it, it gets warmer, which makes them happier. They can produce even more methane. So that's, and that's what most of the studies focus on. Um, but in addition to that, there is, there are large natural gas reservoirs in the Arctic. Um, and most of them are probably deep enough, but some of them are also kept in place because there is a lid of permafrost on top of them. And if you take that lid away or punch holes into it, um, that could potentially allow methane to migrate to the surface along faults or any kind of geologic structure and be released to the atmosphere. And that's what we think we're seeing in the, in the part of the Mackenzie Delta that's west of this sharp uh, permafrost thickness boundary that we see in the Delta. And uh, that's, uh, the, spe the special uh, feature of the Mackenzie Delta is that uh, east of a line that runs approximately along Middle Channel, um, the permafrost is about 600 meters thick and continuous, and west of it, it's only about 100 meters thick, 
and discontinuous, meaning there are already areas that are thawed. Um, and that's where we see these strong methane emissions that we attribute to geologic seepage. Well, this has been Dimitri Laskeros of The Real News speaking to Torsten Sachs, a research scientist at the GFZ German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam, Germany. Thank you very much for joining us today, Torsten. You're welcome. Thank you. And this is Dimitri Laskeros for The Real News.